This lesson deals with an RIAA playback equalization example. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting at page 16. In putting music on a vinyl record, to get a more uniform recording, high frequency tones are amplified and low frequency tones are attenuated. When you play back the record, you need to do just the opposite, like we talked about with the tape recorder in a previous example. The dotted line is the recommended equalization curve by the Record Industry Association of America, or just RIAA. On top of this curve, I made some sketches of the slopes as multiples of 20 dB per decade. Could you figure out the break frequencies and whether it's a pull or a zero, and use that to get the transfer function for the gain of the equalization circuit? My data is that A1 and A2 are 60 dB and 40 dB. F1 through F4 are 20 hertz, 48 hertz, 480 hertz, and 2.1 kilohertz. Let's do the work right here on the drawing. I have a slope that's going from 20 dB per decade to 0 dB per decade. That's indicative of a pull. Going from 0 to minus 20 is again a decrease in slope, so that would again be a pull. Here I'm going from minus 20 to 0, that's an increase in slope, so this would be a 0 at F3. And then lastly, I'm going from 0 dB per decade to minus 20. Then counter a pull again at F4. And this is summarized on the following page. So we have poles at F1, F2, and F4, and a 0 at F3. Also, when S approaches 0, our curve is decreasing as we get lower and lower in frequency, so we're approaching minus infinity dB, and that would be a 0, or a gain of 0, and likewise as S approaches infinity. Let's put together a guess of the transfer function. I have a pole at F1, F2, and F4, multiply that by 2 pi, that becomes omega 1, omega 2, and omega 4, and then I have a 0 at F3, so multiply that by 2 pi, and so I have S plus omega 3 for the 0, and some constant in front. Now let's take a look at, at these extremes. When S approaches infinity, the numerator is S, the denominator is approximately S times S times S, because it's much bigger than the term added to it. So I have S over S cubed, and so as S increases, my transfer function decreases. So that's consistent with what we saw in the Bode plot. But as we look at low frequencies, as S approaches zero, the numerator is omega three, and the denominator is omega one times omega two times omega four. And all this is multiplied by K. But that's not approaching zero, so we're missing something. So I need to make the numerator, as the frequency goes down, also go to zero. So we could do that with just an S by itself. So let's multiply that by S. This will be our second guess of the transfer function. As S approaches infinity, we're going to get S squared divided by S cubed, and that's going to be decreasing and consistent with the Bode plot. And then as S approaches zero, we have S times omega three divided by omega one times omega two times omega four, and all that times K. And so that's approaching zero as S is approaching zero. This is definitely consistent with our Bode plot. Now I want to fit the results to this in exact point. So if you look at the Bode plot on the previous page, the peak is at about 60 dB, which is our value of A1, and that's somewhere between the frequencies F1 and F2. Now it's on a log scale, but they're fairly close to each other between 20 hertz and 48 hertz. So if I take the sum of those two and divide it by two, the linear center of that would be about 34 hertz. So we'll take our transfer function and then put that information in. What is 60 dB? Well, 10 raised to the 60 divided by 20 would be equal 10 to the 3 or 1,000. So the magnitude of our transfer function, after you plug in S equals J omega, we have K, and then we have J times omega. Omega is 2 pi times 34. That'd be 214. And then I have my next term, S, which is equal to J omega plus omega 3. So J 214 plus 2 pi times the 0 that I had at 480 hertz. And then I have my pole at 20 hertz my pole at 48 hertz, and my pole at 2.1 kilohertz. As we're taking your ratio, let's put this in the polar form. It's just 214 at angle 90 degrees. Punching these two numbers in, I found it was 3.02K at 4.1 degrees. This one was 247.8 at 60 degrees. This one was 370 at 35 degrees, and this one was equal to 13.2K at 0.93 degrees. Since I know the magnitude is 1,000, I can then solve for K by just finding the magnitude of these expressions, and so it's be 214 times 3.02K divided by 247.8 and divided by 370 and divided by 13.2K. So that's my result right here. That turns out to be 534 times 10 to the minus 6. So now I can solve for K by taking 1,000 and dividing by this number, and you get 1.873 million. And then my transfer function is equal to K times S, and then S plus my omega divided by s plus omega 1, s plus omega 2, and s plus omega 4. This is an RIAA playback equalization example. 